Good evening. So I watched Apple's uh, event today. Uh, Apple announced a couple of uh, new MacBook Pros using uh, brand new processors. And so I want to make a quick video talking about whether or not we can use these new Macs for software development. And I've done a couple of videos like this in the past. I did one when the M1 was originally introduced. Uh, and back then, that was November of last year. There actually wasn't a lot you could actually run as, as a developer on the on the M1s outside of some of Apple's tools. By the time uh, April of last year rolled around, the picture got uh, a lot better. A lot of the tools uh, that we need to use as software engineers were either ported or had versions that ran on the, the new M1 Max. And with Apple's announcement today of the new MacBook Pros using the uh, the uh, M1 Pro and the M1 Max chips, uh, I want to just kind of give a quick overview of what's working, what's not working, what's sort of working. Let's, let's take a quick look and see what uh, Apple announced today. So uh, there essentially there's two new Macs. Uh, there's a Pro 14 and a Pro 16. And these have the option of where either you can use the M1 Pro chip or the M1 uh, Max chip. And these chips are essentially using, they're using the exact same architecture as the original M1 processor. The main difference is lots of cores, more memory, that sort of thing. The kind of thing you would expect uh, from uh, an upgraded uh, uh, processor chip. So I won't get too much into that other than to say that uh, you know, if you needed a Mac that had 32 gigabytes of RAM or 64 gigabytes of RAM, Apple will sell that to you now. Uh, as of October 2021. So let's take a look at some of the tools. So one of the tools I know that I use quite a bit is Homebrew. And when the M1 was originally introduced, they had ported Homebrew over, but there was, uh, I think actually you had to run it under, um, not under emul well, yeah, technically you had to run it under Rosetta. So it had been running under emulation, but they've since uh, rewritten it so that it actually will run natively on the M1 chips. Uh, and uh, a lot of the libraries that you can install, a lot of the software that you install uh, using Homebrew, a lot of that stuff has been ported. Some of it hasn't. Uh, it's, I think it's still kind of a work in progress. But the important thing is that is supported on the, on the M1 Max. So if there's a specific uh, application or library that you use and you might want to do a little bit of research as far as whether or not it's been ported to the M1 but as far as the tool homebrew has been ported over to the uh, to the M1 chips. Uh, Xcode, Xcode has always supported the M1 chip since it was released. Uh, the one thing that's changed recently is Apple last month uh, released uh, Xcode 13 and uh, there's a new version of Mac OS. It should be released in the next couple of days here. Um, uh, and uh, so this has all the tooling and stuff you need for writing software for those, uh, for those Macs as well. Uh, but uh, there's pretty good support for, uh, for these, uh, these new uh, Macs and stuff with Xcode. So that's not an issue. Uh, the next one is Android Studio. So when I did my last video back in April, um, the support for Android uh, uh, Studio was not that great. You could run Android Studio uh, on the uh, M1 Max, uh, but the emulator support wasn't all that good. Uh, you, I think you had to either run, uh, basically you had to run stuff on the device. Uh, this is improved. They do have uh, emulator support for the M1 chip. Uh, there may be some additional work that you need to do. I found this uh, blog post. Uh, that was up on Medium, and I will put a link to this uh, in the video uh, once I finish recording it. Uh, from This is from Tech Droid Gear, but they go through uh, what you may need to do in order to get uh, uh, Android Studio, and in particular the emulator with ADB running on, on the new Macs. Uh, the next tool I was going to talk about is Visual Studio Code. Uh, this is a tool I use quite a bit. Um, the support picture is pretty good. They, they have uh, a universal installer for, uh, that works on the Intel and the M1 base Mac. So uh, if this is the primary tool you use, so you won't have any issues using this. IntelliJ. So JetBrains has a number of different IDEs that are available, like PyStorm, WebStorm, that sort of thing. They're all based off of this uh, IDE. Uh, back 
Earlier this year, they released uh, a version of this that ran natively on the M1 chip. So if you need to use this tool, this runs on the new uh, M1 Max. Uh, the next tool is Eclipse. Um, this is, believe it or not, this is an IDE I used close to 20 years ago. Uh, and uh, they still are only supporting uh, x86-64 for, for the Mac. Uh, I'm not sure how active the development is on this. Uh, I know I stopped using Eclipse like 15 years ago. There's still people that use Eclipse. Uh, so that may be kind of an important tool for you, but right now it does not look like they are supporting the M1 Mac. Uh, so uh, uh, if you have to use the M1 Mac, uh, look, use a different IDE. Python. So Python has a pretty good support for the most part. Uh, when you write Python code, it'll run uh, natively on the M1. The one place where you might run into some issues if there are libraries or packages that you use uh, with Python that are kind of native uh, packages. You might want to do a little bit of homework just to make sure that they are set up to run natively on the on the M1 chips. Uh, I think the support uh, for this has gotten a lot better since I did in my last videos, but that's just something you might want to just double check on if there's a specific uh, add-on to Python that you need to be able to use. You need to make sure that it runs uh, natively on the M1s. I would just do a little bit of homework on that first. But as far as anything that's written purely in Python, this runs uh, natively on the on the M1. Node.js. So when the Node Foundation released Node 16, uh, they released that with a universal uh, binary. So in other words, this is uh, node we can run either for x86 uh, processors or uh, the new m1 processors and so they made a universal binary uh, the difference now is that uh, probably by the time you view this uh, this video uh, node 16 will be the lts version of node uh, if you're not familiar with uh, lts it stands for long-term support and well, that's important is because that's really the official version that you're supposed to run. Uh, so we should see uh, pretty good support uh, for that. Uh, that should be coming out in a couple of days, the uh, uh, Node 16. But uh, that is set up so that runs natively on the M1 processor. Uh, a lot of people that do mathematical type programming or analytical type programming uh, use R for Mac OS. Uh, back when I did my last video, I don't think they had uh, a good support picture for the uh, M1 Max. Uh, now uh, it looks like they do have a uh, uh, they do have a version that will run on the, uh, the M1 Max. So if you need to be able to run R, uh, there is a version that runs on the on the M1s. .NET. So uh, .NET 6.0 uh, is uh, was developed to run natively on the M1 Max. You can see right here that they have a ARM64 uh, binary for, for Mac OS. Um, so the only downside with this is this is a release candidate. Uh, Microsoft's getting pretty close to release, releasing this uh, as a as officially supported version of, uh, of .NET. Uh, but they do support uh, ARM64. So if uh, you want to do .NET development and you want to use the M1 Max, you can do that. Java. So there is a open JDK version of Java that you can run the M1 Max. Um, yeah, Java is kind of a weird uh, animal now because of the way that uh, uh, Oracle supports it. So uh, previously, you know, uh, each of the different you know, uh, operating system vendors would do their own implementation of Java. And then Apple kind of said, well, we're not going to be doing that anymore. So if you want to do it, Oracle, you can, uh, which kind of went against uh, the whole ethos of what uh, Java was supposed to be. But there is an open JDK version that does run on the M1 Max. Uh, so if you need to be able to use that, you should be able to use that. Golang. So this is another language that's becoming increasingly popular. Um, so Golang, the last video I did on this, uh, Golang uh, was supported by the M1 processor. Uh, the thing that's interesting about Go is that uh, the compiler for Go is based off of GCC. 
Uh, JCC was ported to run on the M1 Max, so uh, shouldn't be any issue. Everything in Go is basically uh, is compiled at uh, runtime, uh, so there's not like libraries you have to worry about uh, per se. But um, uh, but Go is, uh, is is fully supported on the M1 processors. Uh, the next thing is Rust. So if you're doing a Rust development, Rust is also supported on the M1 processors. Uh, it looks like they also have a version here that runs on the iOS simulator as well. Uh, that's kind of important, um, but uh, that's good. So there's a uh, full on support for, for Rust on the uh, M1 Max. Uh, the next tool, this is kind of an important tool, is Docker Desktop. So uh, you can see here they have an installer here for the Apple chip, that's what they call it. And I also have one here for the Mac with Intel chip. Uh, the thing that's really cool about Docker is that uh, they actually have it set up now to where you're, if you're running a container on Docker, uh, it may have been a container that was set up to run on you know, ARM64, like M1 style chips, or it might have been one that's set up to run on x86. It's actually possible to set up a container so that you can have both architectures in the same container. So they're doing some really neat, innovative things with uh, with Docker uh, as far as being able to set up a container that will run essentially on uh, you know both architectures. So if you need to be able to support both architectures, uh, this is a technology you might want to take a look at. Uh, Electron. So if you're not familiar with Electron, Electron is a way that you can build uh, native desktop applications using web technologies like JavaScript and uh, uh, HTML, CSS, or sort of thing. Uh, you'd be surprised. There's a lot of applications, probably applications you use that were written with Electron. I believe Electron has supported the M1 processor since uh, version 11. They're up to version 15. So if you need to be able to use Electron, uh, that shouldn't be any issue. Uh, so the last time I did one of these videos, uh, there was not really good all-around support for virtualization. So if you needed to run Windows or Linux on the M1 Max, uh, about the only option you really had was to use a tool called uh, U UTM, which is uh, based off of uh, KeyEMU. Uh, but now uh, there's support, I think since April of last year, uh, Parallels has supported the M1 chip. And uh, there's now, it looks like, a uh, fall preview of VMware Fusion. So if you're a fan of VMware and being able to use VMware Fusion, this runs on the M1 Max. Uh, and just like what I was talking about before, Parallels. Parallels has been running on uh, M1 Max for, for a number of months now. And then, of course, uh, you may be interested in looking at QMAU, which also lets you uh, uh, run uh, uh, Windows or Linux on, on these Macs. Now, I will say the one caveat here is this is virtualization. So if you're looking to run like Windows 11, for example, and you want to run that, uh, it has to be uh, essentially the insider edition for ARM64 if you want to run that on the M1 Max. They, don't have a way right now of being able to run uh, the Intel version of Windows on the M1 Max. So if you need to be able to run uh, basically an application or something like that that was written for x86 on Windows, uh, there's still not a good story for, for doing that. Uh, but at this point, I think everybody should be looking at porting over to, the, uh, uh, to this new chip architecture. Uh, that being said, uh, this is a pretty exciting uh, chip architecture, and uh, I'd be really surprised if Microsoft uh, didn't start offering uh, better support, uh, similar to what uh, Apple's done with Rosetta for the M1s, where you can run x86 code uh, pretty close to native speeds on, a, on an M1 processor. I wouldn't be surprised if Microsoft doesn't start doing something like that pretty soon with uh, uh, the ARM64 based processors and Windows. So with that being said, if uh, you like this video, you'd like to see more content like this, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you can give me a thumbs down, but please just give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this, uh, I do videos like this all the time. 
please hit the subscribe button and you can see more videos like this. So with that, have a nice evening.